And so, thanks to Haley Parker, I did just uh, start watching like Discovery Plus, and let me tell you, it's a gem. It's a great platform. Oh, yes, it's a great platform. <laughs> These little animals we're watching on screen now are so cute. This is so calming. But it was, I thought there was one on, on Netflix where they like narrate the animals, and it's like. Yeah. Really funny. I don't know what that one's called. There is, yeah. I think every platform needs to have its version of an animal show, so it's just figuring out what your like niche animal show is. I totally agree. Well, um, isn't every animal, or every show an animal show? Right. Because <laughs> humans are animals as <laughs> and well. And yeah. this show's an animal show, Sessions with Mary Jane. We're wild animals. <laughs> with your host, uh, Brendan O'Brien. Mm-hmm. And, and Jordan Freed. And Rena Ezra, oh, in that nice. order. You said, you said each other. Those are not us, but someone else <laughs> in the group. Hello, everyone. We are challenging Brendan today on this episode of Sessions with Mary Jane. It's an afternoon episode, so hopefully we will be put together and really awake on oh, this yes. episode. This is not a nighttime episode. I'm already yawning, though. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I woke up tired. <clears throat> it's pretty convenient, right? That uh, there were creatures on the screen once we got into the uh, studio, right? Yes, yes, very interesting. Because I'm looking at the terrain, mm-hmm. looking at the surroundings. Um, seeing if there's any bodies of water. Mm. It perhaps reminds me of how uh, Warwick, the place that Brendan and I grew right, up, right, yes. actually had a very Where big Brendan lake in it. Uh, yes. And it was known... Uh, More than one lake, quite a few lakes. But we'll just name the one that's the no, obvious No, 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 you lake. can't name anything. You oh, can't okay, name okay. anything. Not guys, a single guys, thing. Guys, if this is in some way... we are starting. And if your challenge is starting. to name as many lakes as possible since for some reason he is deranged and thinks he's from the lake. Oh my god. His home exactly. Town. So he doesn't even to... think he's from a town. He thinks he's from a lake in his hometown. Guys, I I know what I know. I thought it was gonna, I know what the challenge was about. I'm like, if they find some kind of way of doing a challenge that strong arms me into admitting I'm from Warwick. One, that's very impressive. Two, <laughs> fuck you. But I'm glad. No, I'm excited. I like lakes. I so oh, this is a a lake. All right, so all right, do I go? I, I've been on the show. Yeah, no, like, no rules. They just have to be real lakes. Okay. They have to be legit lakes. lakes. So okay. no under the silver lake. Real, yeah, yes. that does not count. Mm-mm. However, okay, well, I will say Greenwood Lake first. So, so Greenwood Lake, uh, born and bred, and no longer living there, but a just wonderful in place. It, no, hey, listen. Uh, the guest is always right, and I am the guest today. So Greenwood Lake is an independent town. I am playing. You're actually our adult son today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, guys, uh, listening right now. Uh, we did some improv earlier. At one point, Jordan and Rena had characters that were doctors <laughs> having sex on top of me. So like, yeah. <laughs> well, no, that would not be what <laughs> we would do if you were our so adult son. Up. Oh no. my god. We would only do that if you're a dead gonna... body. Oh, a dead stranger. You body, were a dead right? body. Yeah, you were a dead body. Yeah. Um, but it's yeah. different to have sex on a corpse as opposed to having sex on your son. Right, right. Dead, <laughs> dead or living, I guess. So I almost spit on my water. Oh my god. Yeah, that's kind of so. Thank you guys for joining the Patreon. Like you're gonna get the the crazy and the weird stuff from us because you're getting this crazy afternoon stuff. We are also drinking coffee, so we are doing the poor man speedball game right now. Yippee! Yeah. Also, um, uh, it's summery and springy outside. It's it about is. to be 80 degrees tomorrow. Yeah, so. apparently. That's, that's you what sound skeptical. the so-called meteorologists say. You know, I don't believe what the weather tells my, me. My phone tells me anymore. I don't, I don't believe any of this stuff because... I, I just end up disappointed, you know, mm. and it's just maybe, or maybe it's the weather I don't want to hear about. Like, you know, we just had so much rain. I get it. April showers. We get it. There, you, you rain a lot. We get the month, okay? May brings flowers. We get that. We get that. That's great. Mm. Okay, awesome. Great. But can we fucking stop it? I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of rain. Past two weeks have been cold. Mm. Uh, look, you got me started. I'm all, I'm all heated up. I'm very, I'm just very upset because, you know, I, I just... I hate shitty weather and it really affects my mood. But I guess it's me, you know. It's not Mother Nature, it's me. I have to, I have to control it. This just turns into a therapy session. But I'm working through things, you know. I'm working, working We're around. happy to hear that. Mother Nature's happy to hear that. We're all... This is my Mark Marin spiel. This is my... Are you suffering from seasonal <laughs> affective disorder? If so, get help. Yeah. <laughs> Meditate. And Listen to sessions seek with a Mary Jane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Smoke um, some marijuana. It's make you feel as though it's not that out. <laughs> if that's... Um, uh, psychologically helpful for you. <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, what is your relationship? Obviously, you think you have a kinship to Greenwood Lake, but, like, what is your relationship with the lake? 
as a whole. Um, I like the body of water. I guess it's yeah. Oh. You how'd your ancestors land there? Uh, they, so yeah, ever, everyone I've ever known was transported via lake, uh, including children <laughs> are always born in lakes in my family. Uh, no, I, I I mean lakes were one of the first things I grew up like swimming in, and like that was probably the first time I went in the water was in a lake, just because I did live like down the street from Greenwood Lake itself. So, um, and I was you know it's it's. I it's big enough where you there's a lot of unknowns, but not too big where you have to worry about sharks eating your feet, which I think is good for children especially to not have to because like yeah. I definitely did sometimes wonder if there would be an alligator that was going to eat my feet, but most of the time it was just fish. Did you have any real scares? Like when where they actually grabbed me when you were in a lake or no, no just saw a water snake, but you were just freaked out no, or do it. You know, uh, I mean, were there actual harmful stuff? But <laughs> no, the closest thing is probably like I would be swimming and then I'd be like, "Wow, oh, where'd everyone go?" And then my dad would be under the water and he would, like pull my feet down, pretend like he was some kind of creature pulling me oh, under there. Wow. So that was yes, that's. Uh, but he he got stung by <laughs> he got stung by a jellyfish when he was younger and he had like oh. a, like a little like a, like a a welt or a, um, a boil on his shoulder for his whole life because of it. Yeah, wow. yeah, and like, and he got lucky because there was other people um, who got stung by the same jellyfish who were like not as lucky. So, no yeah. what do you mean they died? No, it's like, like you can get hurt more than just getting like like it hurt him, but like you can like people it still hurt like you can it's still painful that area afterward. Uh, I mean, probably for a little while afterwards, not like forever. I'm assuming. Oh, that's but, I thought. You but meant jellyfish for are just years. dangerous. It, like I was like, but How? nobody peed on him. No, nobody. Yeah, peed. I was. That was my next question. Is that the jellyfish thing? You pee on them? Okay, apparently. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they didn't know that. Cause it's it, also if a skunk sprays you, you also pee on people. I don't know. Jordan's supposed to pee on people. That's not finish. true. No, no, no. If, <laughs> if it's by a skunk, you have to put tomato juice on you. Did you guys get skunked like at all ever in no. your life? Oh, really? You have? Oh, yeah. It was. <laughs> yeah, it was. So, bad. did you put tomato juice on yourself? Oh, the whole, yeah, the whole thing. So, I didn't directly get skunked. It was, and so maybe this is why I can't smell. So, in case you guys don't know the continuity of, mm. of our lives, I have like a very bad sense of smell. Yeah. Uh, almost no smell sometimes. Uh, really, yeah, and this, this was pre, before COVID. Pre COVID, yeah. yeah. This was like Brennan's been. He suffered from this. Yeah. Whole <laughs> Everyone got so would get so worried when I'd say it during now times, and then I have to be like, guys, it's always been broken. <laughs> but no, but only like but at one point it worked pretty well. And one time I smelled the skunky smell in the backyard, and I kind of thought it was weed because eventually, or like <laughs> like when I was a kid, there'd be a lot of times where I would be like, oh, I think there's a skunk outside. My parents like kind of like I think they knew it was just weed, and they were just like, oh yeah, it's a skunk outside. Like uh, whether it was like a neighbor walking by or it was like a kid outside, but. Um, but one time there was a skunky smell, so I went outside to go check, and my dog, Lucky, was in the backyard, and he's walking towards me, and as the closer he gets, the worse it smells, and I'm like, oh, he got skunked. So I, I never actually saw the skunk. It's just that, like, Lucky walked in the house and brought the smell with him, and you would ah. think that you wouldn't really get, like, if, unless you got sprayed, you would think that you wouldn't get the smell on you, so that's how I kind of felt. Uh, so we, like, we washed Lucky in the bathtub, we, like, put tomato sauce on him, like, every version of tomato that we had, we put on Lucky, <laughs> uh, like, tomato paste, everything. And then so I went to school the next day, and I got on the bus, and like didn't like the world kind of just went on. Like, I knew Lucky kind of smelled a little bit still, but he got sprayed. And I got on the bus. I was kind of just, like making conversation with this girl that I sat with, and I was like, I kind of just wanted to tell a story about how my dog got skunked, and I was like, and I was like, oh, uh, I was like, I was like, do I smell? Because like my dog got skunked yesterday, and she smells me. And she goes, oh my god, you do. And it turned out that the smell got stuck to me. Um, and I asked friends to bring, cl- like, one of my friends, my friend Chris, to bring clothes for me, thinking that would stop it, and it stopped for a whole, like, 15 no. minutes, and then I got <laughs> smelly again, and so all day, I just it's would see people- It's from your body. Pe- yeah, and it, it felt like it got worse as the day went on, and, like, What I would- grade were you? Oh, this is like high school. This is like oh, like tenth or eleventh grade. Eleventh, so, okay. Yeah. So definitely not attracting girls with this. Oh, definitely not. Not in, in a positive old way. Old gender. Today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and it, it was like a pattern where I'd go to a new class and all, and like everyone would be normal, and then all of a sudden, little by little, I would see people like start <laughs> sniffing, and and then eventually the whole class was just like sniffing, and I'm just like, and at a certain point, I was just like, hey, it was me. Like I smell like a skunk. You just, you just seem like a cartoon or like a show where a kid. It just has the worst superpower ever. Yeah. <laughs> Stinky boy. Yeah. And people are, and what would the teacher do? Like, what, how, uh, did, but. <laughs> they're probably used to kids smelling. Kids how did smell you get time. used to it? How did I, you, you I, or you just got used to the, the I was smell? just embarrassed for the entire day. <laughs> and then I went home, and then the only good day was. So your parents never got it? No one else in the household? Your siblings they might have. Didn't... Uh, I, I feel like I remember me getting it the worst. 
just, I think it was just because, like, I went outside, so I was, like, in the general vicinity uh, where it was happening. I was, like, the first one to interact with yeah, Lucky when he came yeah, in. Yeah. So I'm assuming that, like, I got, like, the fresh scent of the skunk fright on me. And what kind of pet was Lucky? He's a dog. What kind of dog? Though? He was, mo- so he was mostly beagle. The, we got him uh, from a farm. It was a guy who was... And he was always out, outdoors. Like, he... Yeah, we had, like, a, we had, like, a gated in backyard, so he, him and my other dog, Katie, they pretty much, like, just, like, ran around there. Uh, oh, but that wasn't the dog that would wander to other people's houses? That's Lucky. You know, that, that oh, that like, is? <laughs> with the cat? Wait, wait, can you say that again? What was the thing? So, Lucky... Uh, so, he mostly roamed around in the backyard, but then... Also, he had a knack, because we were talking yesterday about uh, dogs getting either spaded or getting yes. like, their balls cut uh-huh. off. And how, like, uh, one of the theories with that, with why you do that, is that it, it keeps the dogs from running away. Because, like, they have just, like, hormones. And I guess people assume if you get rid of the hormones, you get rid of their desire for life and, and their <laughs> desire to do anything. So they'll just sit there, which is often the case. Um, but that did not happen with Lucky. Lucky mm-hmm. still ran away. And then eventually he, we realized that after he got his balls cut off, he pretty much would run to the same house. And there was a cat family there. And he essentially assumed the role of father in this cat family <laughs> with little kittens. <laughs> and so I, I always knew where he went. So he would literally just be out on the porch. And then he's I, like the kid's stepdad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the villain of that story because I would be the one to show up and drag Lucky back home, and I would do that like every, oh, no. like, 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 yeah, like a couple times a month that would happen. So that was a literal Lady in the Tramp story. And yeah, you were the the, the chef, the, <laughs> the dog catcher. Is that like who the villain is? In Lady yeah, in the yeah, Tramp? yeah, the dog catcher. Is that just the yeah. bad guy? Yeah. Um, also, uh, under so Under the Silver Lake is a movie, so I can't say Under the Silver Lake. Silver Lake, I believe, is a real lake though in California. So oh, we're gonna check our databases for that one. Yeah. So uh, also Lake Ontario, um, Lake Michigan, uh, Lake Welch, which is uh, close to Orange County, Greenwood Lake area, and it's also kind of like a place where a lot of city people go. That's like the go-to. <clears throat> there is no Silver Lake. It is the Silver Lake Reservoir. Oh. Does it count? Okay. Um. Let's see. Say the exact name. Yeah. Like, wow, you really fucked up. Also, it's man made. It can't be man made. Ooh, Wait. we're only talking natural here. Wait, hold on. Is this the bars and the bits shit again? <laughs> As usual, Jordan changes the No, rules. no, but it can't just Once be like a lake challenge. that is just very clearly like put in a city so that there like, is a piece of. Like, there's a water like a reservoir. Pond? Yeah. <laughs> So how big did it have to be? No, it can't, it can't be man-made. Um, lake George. Mm-hmm. That's a lake. That's a real lake. Yeah, yeah that was like that was like the go-to yeah. lake or like vacation spot when I was a kid too. Really? Yeah, yeah, nice. we, yeah. yeah. India, like once you like that's the thing. That's the cool thing about New York. And obviously, if you live in anywhere in New York that's not the city, you probably know this already. But uh, a lot of times, people who aren't from New York or people who live in the city assume that. New York City is the only part of New York that exists. So like, yeah, Indian so Lake or uh, Lake George. Oh, Indian Lake too. That's not true though. Most people in New York City are cultured enough to know. Like, I know. I know a lot of people who not that they don't know it exists, but they really but that's they, their whole world. They pretend that it doesn't yeah, exist. Uh-huh. If anything, mm, interesting. Yeah. No, no. I, do, don't do people li- don't people live in New York City so that they go to the Hamptons, they go to Lake George, they go to places like that? Some people, most people, a lot of people like live in the city because they want to stay in the city and like. They just like that. Like that is New York. Like I, I know so many people who, when I've said I live in New York and I said I don't live in the city, they're like, "You don't live in New York," and I'm like, "I, I live in the state of New York." Oh yeah, because there's like because there's, oh, there's a pride I, to living uh-huh. in New York City, you know, and and that's like the. But there's ultimate. a weirdness. People like when when you live in the city now, like people just leave in the summers. Like you're like when I lived in the city, I feel like I was the only person who would be at home. Like in the city on the weekends, like mm-hmm. I feel like everybody was talking about how they were trying to get out of town, and like nobody well, was trying to stay in the city. They're all out of town now. They all left town. Yeah, and they stayed that out of town. Was, that was before the COVID thing. So now, yeah. like tons of people have left the city. Yeah, but there there is this weird thing about how people in the city, like when they're off, they like leave town, and like maybe it's an upper class type of person too. Maybe it's I not it's not so. working class type of person. You're yeah. just doing that because you don't have the money to leave, yeah, or you're working yeah. on the weekend or whatever, or you're seeing your family the one day you're off. But I guess some people's family lives outside of the city, or people just like are rich and have money to spend mm-hmm. and want to live every life at the same time. Yeah, I want to live one life at one time. Well, Not... that's what you're doing right now. Yeah. Am I? Congrats. Yeah, you're right. You're only living in the sitting in your living room. <laughs> like, yeah. 
<laughs> it's a good life, though. It's it's been nice. Like as much as like you know, what? I'll say like I, if we had a less ideal living room situation and we like didn't have like a living room that we enjoyed being in, it would have made a much for a much harder pandemic. This is like true. We were twice we were lucky. or three we times. We were fortunate to yeah. have the space that we had. This is like twice or three times the size of my New York City living room. Mm-hmm. And the living room was connected to the kitchen. Yeah, come to Joysy, people. Yeah. Jersey through and through. Jersey um, is amazing. Jersey's got some great stuff, but... Never mind. What were you going to say? I was going to... No, nothing. Do you nothing. think the United States will ever split? What? And then New York so and New Jersey and like the Northeast is just like Europe. And it's Wait. just like you go what? back and forth between. No, we're never gonna split the United States. Never mind, that's not gonna happen. Wait, it's like split within the states? Yeah, no, that would only happen if we had a civil war. I would be the divided states of America. I did kind of think that we were moving in that direction, uh, like halfway through the pandemic, where it felt like there was like these. Because that was especially once like people were sectioning off for like sanitary reasons and for like COVID reasons. Because because mm-hmm. like the tri-state did kind of like unify and it's like oh we're gonna have like the same rules. Whereas yeah. like the South was doing its own fucking thing. California well, was doing its own thing. Well, we are divided. Yeah, we're not really united state. I mean, like we we are as close to what Lake you're saying. Lake Huron. Good one. Mm-hmm. We are as close to what you're saying Jordan as possible like to be honest like it's not I don't like even in the past we've always been like I guess just in time geographically like or with the planet when the tectonic plates shift and all the regions and everything move around I wonder what America's gonna look that's the thing that intrigues me it's like oh damn what is like you know a a picture of the map and the world like obviously that changes over years and years and years and years you know, in the very, very, you know, uh, millions and millions of years ago when we just had Pangea and then it broke off into mm. the, like, that's super cool where it's just like, oh man, yeah, what if America just like breaks apart, like splinters off and these countries do this and this country does that. But to answer your question, Jordan, yes, I think we're very divided. <laughs> we're not, because it's true, like Brent, what Brendan was saying, though, especially this past year and a half, uh, politically and just logically, the shit with the uh, coronavirus, just to be people were not in the same reality. Mm-hmm. Like, people were on very different, it just had very different points of view, and it's just very ridiculous. Yeah. But now I just realized, yeah, we would never divide. People like having access to New York and California. Yeah. Like, people in the middle of the country would never give up access to New York and California. Yeah. I and think, well, like, that's beaches. That's the thing, because you get to see such a variety in America. When, yes, you go to the West Coast, <clears throat> you're in the Mid Coast, <clears throat> the uh, Midwest, and then you're in the e- Mid Coast. <laughs> <laughs> then you're on the East Coast, but We're you, like, just California itself has so many different, you know, terrain. But that is, I mean, I also love being in Jersey because you can drive to Delaware, you can drive to Pennsylvania, drive to, to New York, drive to Rhode Island, drive to Maine, drive to, like, and of course do that also in the South. It depends on, like, how far you want to go. People drive to Florida, but it's just like, wow, very convenient spot for me to, I don't have to, like, constantly fly to these places. Yeah. Like, they are, it's just a lot closer in proximity, and then, um... Yeah, I don't know. I also would love to do a long road trip all the way to California, like going across the country. I haven't done that uh, drive, like that long. What's the ju- longest yeah. you've gone, Jordan? To New Orleans? Is that the longest drive? New Orleans to Pittsburgh. How long was that? 16 hours? 24 hours a day? Or I guess I went from Philly to New Orleans, and that was probably a 19-hour drive. Like what about by you, myself Yeah. Uh, um, New uh, New York City to Utah. I went. I drove out with with Utah. with Ethan Beller and Mitch Mortov to Sundance. Drove. Yeah, and mm. and so we like stopped along the way because on the way there we took our time. We went, went to Chicago. We stopped in Nebraska. Stopped in Colorado. Sweet. But on the way back, we had, we had class. Like we had, uh, cause we all went to Brooklyn College at the time, and we all uh, I think two of us had class at eight a.m. that Monday morning. So we literally like, saw our last movie. I think we, like, I don't even think we slept. We might have slept for, like, an hour in the hotel, and then we booked it out of there. We had to basically drive 24 hours straight to make it back oh in time. God. And it was, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, that was... Wasn't it close? That, yes. That, that you made it, though? We made it, yeah. We wow. made it. We made it back with, like, a couple hours to spare before class started, so wow. it was, like, like late night. Uh, but I'll tell you, like, that was, there was some, like, that was, like, some of the scariest driving I've ever done. Also... Also, Wait, what like, was the I, class? Sorry, what was the class? Um, Mustafa Khan's Production 1 class, I believe. Or, no, the Director's Workshop class. 
And why was it the what was what was like your you said it was the scariest drive you take like I mean because it was that it's night. just what, what was, is the what, what were it? the fears like what were your yeah it was the what were you gonna say no I was just gonna say it's like I took a lot of like road trips as a kid but it was always going from like an unpopulated area to like a very populated area mm-hmm. and it would be like driving through and stuff like that but it's like very crazy to like be leaving New York City and then seeing the rest of the world because mm-hmm. like New York City is just so much going on at once it's and then all shop. of a sudden you'll never be back to that on your entire trip yeah. until you're back like yeah. you don't like driving in uh, Jordan like in when there's like nobody around no I don't... I'm saying like when there's no uh, it's like uh, what's God, what's the word I'm thinking of it's just not populated. It's just not a city where you like can be driving these really, really long stretches, and if your car breaks, it breaks down, and you have like no service in that mm-hmm. area, and then you're just like. Does it like Erie yet? Um, no. Yeah. You haven't said that yet. That's one. Um, like, does that freak you out mm-hmm. when driving, Jordan and Brendan? Like, was that one of your fears? I'm trying to find out. Like, what was it? What was it that you know? put you in a panic mode or what is it about what is it driving like, at night driving at night automatically is like because it, it and i like i don't mind driving at night if it's like an area like that that that's popular if there's like lights around there's like business and there's like things happening i'll get as freaked out but like but there are those trips that don't have any yeah lights and, like, and, they, like, and also like like when you're driving across the country it's like you are going through these stretches where there's nothing around it's yeah, so yeah, open yeah. And so it's that part of it. Also, being tired, like being tired, is already kind of hard to do. And like when you're sleeping, but like oh my God. if the, it, and so there's one point where I was wearing these like blue so tinted glasses in order to like keep the because when, when the, then when something does come, like if a, if a truck is coming the down the road, blinding, the yeah. blinders are on, and then you go from zero the to sixty, and just, your eyes can't oh, adjust yeah. to it. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Okay, yeah, I was trying to get down to the specifics because I don't. I've never done drive like that, so I am mm-hmm. just like. I was just very curious. I'm like, ooh, what's the setting? What is it like? Yeah. The one uh, tour I went on, uh, we had to drive through the night to get to, uh, I want to say Savannah, Georgia, which isn't like a hmm. hugely far drive. But like, I just remember I was meeting people in New York City who were like getting off work. Mm-hmm. And like one of them was like at least five or six years older than me. But like he smoked a lot of weed. So it was kind of just like implied um, that he was going to sleep mm-hmm. on the trip, and then the other person was getting off their job, so, like, they were tired. And I legit was just, like, at a bar, just, like, having a drink, mm-hmm. just, like, getting ready to go. And then, legit, like, I had my uh, jewel at the time, and I just, like, jeweled all through the night to Savannah, Georgia, mm-hmm. like, straight from, like, 9 p.m. until, like, 6 a.m. Yeah, no, it, it's... <laughs> Real healthy. You know, you, sometimes you're doing drives, you got, you're like, I gotta stay awake, I gotta, and then whether it's, like, jeweling or, yeah. or, like, or smoking, or if it's, like, uh, t- like drinking a lot of coffee. It's like, something. Yeah. yeah. And then that's, like, a real, like, serious thing that I didn't, like... No, until like you like sometimes you'll see these like massive trucks in the middle of the night that are like cr- that cr- are crashed off to the side of the road and you're like how did that happen? Yeah. And the like, truck drivers are driving long hours all the time and are exhausted and they just pass out at the wheel and the truck just crashes and it just happens. Oh. So, <laughs> that happened one time when I was in elementary school. We were uh, I don't know how much people know uh, Warwick, but I went to Park Ave, mm. uh, which is like right on Seventeen A, and it's like right by the dent the dental office, Galloway Dental, and the motel, and one day, like, there was just a huge commotion at school, and then, like, everybody just went outside for recess, and the house that was, like, by the park just had an entire truck through the deck. It just replaced the deck. But yeah, the guy must have fallen asleep, and he oh, just went geez. through there and <laughs> threw a bunch of kids oh, at school. Yeah. And like the house was fine, like the house has been remodeled a bunch of times, but like the deck just had to be replaced. And they've done a hundred paint jobs where it's always like a crazy color. Like they never pick a normal color because <laughs> uh-huh. it's on the corner. Uh, like so many yeah. people pass it every day, so it's been like purple. It's been green. It's been yellow. <laughs> What's your favorite? It might have been pink. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what it is right now, but hmm. definitely just any time it doesn't have a truck in it is probably my favorite <laughs> my truck favorite color. color. I um I don't yeah I don't I don't think I've ever had any scares like that being in school. I don't know. You were just making me think. I'm like hmm. What if like if I'm elementary or when I was in was this middle school or high school? 
Um, apparently there was somebody who robbed a bank near mm-hmm. our school. So then they were they put it uh, is uh, they put us in lockdown, but we were out on the track for a gym. Mm-hmm. So they just waited they had us wait outside. <laughs> and I'm just like, but does that make the most sense? Like we were always talking about it. And we were just like, is this the most efficient thing? Because he's outside, like he's he's near our direction. Right, right. Shouldn't we be inside the building and yeah. not outside? Because he's he's not. I but I don't know if he. I don't think he was like that close to the school or went inside the building, but yeah. it was also pretty Sandy Hook and all that stuff. So oh. people were not thinking that. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it like Columbine was had already Columbine happened, was the nineties. Yeah. That's you know, so this is. But that felt. I feel like people thought that was a one-time thing, right? I, like, I don't. They were just I like, oh, this only so. happens once. We we did a lot of active active shooter drills when I was in school. That we was did. oh yeah we, we did yeah yeah, yeah 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 we did drills yeah and we didn't have like super like we I I remember one, when I was in high school. Um, uh, like it was like pretty loose for the most part. Like you had like a security guard here and there, but it wasn't like constant. Uh, but we did do drills, and also like once I graduated, then they started becoming like very very strict. So that's like twenty ten. So like I guess like mm. what, what what year did Sandy Hook happen? That was. Yeah. Uh, I want to say that was twenty twelve. Okay, so yeah, around there, where like then like things got like thirteen, things got really locked down. But yeah, no, we always like twelve December maybe. Yeah, and like I guess like just doing drills in general just felt very normal in school, so it didn't feel all that weird. Um, when they're like, okay, everyone like get down. Uh, and like get away from the window. That was like a big thing with active shooter drills. One and then one time they they thought it was real and trying there's there's yeah, some hunting outside December like, twenty twelve. Yeah, yeah so. Right I was getting a haircut that day, yeah. and I remember watching the news in the haircut place, mm. and being like, wow, I can't believe this is happening right now. And to think, like, I'm watching this on the news, and then, like, a year later, people are just denying it happened. Two years later, people are denying it happened. Yeah. Whenever they started denying that it happened. Also, I remember being in high school, we never had active shooter drills, but, like, there was definitely a day that somebody, like, read graffiti in one of the bathrooms that said somebody was gonna shoot up the school. Mm. And, like, it might have been from, like, years before. But, like, they read it and they alerted somebody. And then, like, it just Mm. spread through the school so quickly that, like, somebody thought somebody was gonna shoot up the school. And then it was, like, the day that the parents were like, oh, like, which parents love their kids? Are they just going to send their kids to school or are they going to keep them home? And, like, there were a lot of parents who, like, kept their kids home that day. But then, like, I was in school and there was just, like, this one kid who was just, like, a goth kid who, like, was wearing a trench coat in gym class and I'm just like, is this when it happens? <laughs> like, oh what's God. going on right now? And then I was like, fine, nothing happened. But then I was working at the library and I remember just somebody... trench coat's a bad... A bad... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they're so practical. Yeah, and then people had to use them for evil. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I was working at the library, and somebody returned a book that was like on automatic weapons, mm-hmm. and like I looked at the slip to see like the name on it, and I was like, should I like tell somebody that there's like a high school kid who's like reading up on guns? Mm-hmm. Like, is this kid about to shoot up the school? Like, what is he reading up on guns for? Yeah, like, it's about to be sent back to another library. Nobody's gonna even know that this kid ever like looked at this book. Yeah, but it's just like everywhere in America, kids are doing that on the internet. Like, yeah. if somebody wants to shoot up a school, like they're just gonna read about it on the internet well, and figure out how to do it. Oh, so yeah. they don't yeah. need books. What was the thing the the doc that we watched months ago about the anarchist cookbook? Oh, yeah, wow, that was crazy. So, uh, for those of you who haven't heard it or known, but I just wanted to know, because I was curious, I was like, oh, when was that published? First published in 1971, a book a guy put together containing instructions for the manufacture of explosives, rudimentary telecommunications, freaking devices, and related weapons, as well as instructions for home, manu- home manufacture of, like, illicit uh, drugs. Um, hmm. So, LSD and stuff like that, but a lot of like behind these very horrific some of the horrific events with shootings explosions bombings and stuff like that someone's had a copy of this so it was very like interesting documentary but definitely sad for the dude because when he you know publishes or made it whatever he's never going to live that down. Like, Mm. never going to... Like, he's not directly responsible. And again, because you release information... Which also, he found all the information 
from books on in about like the military, mm-hmm. all of these sections within within the military and stuff, all of those books, what were they like the really old I don't remember what they called them, but they're the really old texts you get uh in a library like one of like, the like reference books kind of uh yeah yeah but they were I'll, I'll try and look it up and and find it um but he all of the information he found to make this collection in one book in the anarch- anarchist cookbook all the information he found was readily available it was all he, you can look anywhere this was before the internet but he went anywhere in like those libraries and found those encyclopedias um, and was and just pulled the information there and like s- put it together in one text. Mm. So yeah, I don't know. It's it's like you have all this wealth of information, but are you res- you're not responsible for what somebody does with it, mm-hmm. how somebody uses it. But then yeah, when like the press got to him, even after probably making that documentary, things probably resurfaced yeah. and he's just like, "Oh, like here we go." Like, yeah, I don't know, just listening to him and watching him talk on the screen, you're just like, "Damn, like this is that's harsh. Yeah. That's harsh. Also, why the fuck did you do? Like, why did you have? And he goes all into that. I don't want to like reveal this stuff, but people, yeah, definitely uh, watch it. I, I, what is the actual name? I think it's. <clears throat> it's important though for people who are not in the military to have access to that. So if the military was, uh, like I don't know, captained by a white supremacist dictator, I, yeah. like you should be able to have this information available so that you can stop them. You know, no, like, the documentary is called American Anarchist, mm, yeah. and it was it was came out in twenty sixteen. Hmm. So we yeah. saw it uh, years after that, but yeah, Manifesto Obama Making Manual, and sold more than two million copies. Yeah. So, um, so it's that's the thing they were going through many different uh, cases in history where it, it explored how the book inspired decades of violence, anti-government attacks, and um, the like. The dude who wrote it to explore his own troubling past, and that uh, was uh, Powell. Mm. Um, yeah, William Powell, I think. Yeah. Um, and he was there with his wife and his family like he had to leave the country was, like there's there's a whole thing like that's it's insane yeah it's just like a reminder that humans are capable of building things that can end lives which I think is like that still is like it's like humans did this like, pe- like human beings are the ones who invented guns they invented weaponry mm-hmm. and like it's like they were invented to kill people and like yes like granted like, some weapons are used for hunting animals um, which is like a different conversation. And protection. Yeah, but but protection like yeah, maybe from animals, but like protection from other people who are also trying to kill you. You know, yeah. it's just like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah, it's just a. Uh, uh, there's this uh, this song in a Stephen Sondheim musical. The musical is called Assassins, and basically it's like a the framework is like it's a. Um, like a carnival sideshow, but all the characters are all the people who have either assassinated or attempted to assassinate a president mm-hmm. in the country, in the United States, and they also kind of just do these songs throughout it. Um, and there's one song that's like about how it takes many people to make a gun, but all it takes is one person to fire a gun, mm-hmm. and and like it's just a very like I don't know we're we're at a very interesting place in in like war- the world, but also especially in this country with like how guns are like, and the, I know there are people who like who are in favor of it for all the reasons they are in favor of it, but it's just, like, it's a, I think it's weird that anyone's passionate about it. I'm like, oh my God, if you, like, if you need it for something very, like, like, a business related, if you, like, you are someone who, like, I don't know, I don't know what kind of business needs a gun, but, like, there's, like, I think people who get, like, like a hard on for guns when they're, yeah, when weird they're me out. When they're extremely excited, it is weird because it's, like, you, you're, you know what, div- you, you know what you're holding? Like, you know what that, yeah. it, like, that's, that doesn't excite me. It's a very dangerous weapon and just because it has such a huge amount of, you know, potentially, like, what it can do and, like, the capability and, like, that um, <clears throat> is think, a bit daunting. Yeah, it's not, I, I wouldn't get, well, also. I just think growing up, though, we're bred to fear things and we're bred to fear that, like, people are going to be violent towards us. Yeah. So I think it's just natural that, like, if you get to an age where you're, like, 12 to like 16 Mm -hmm. and like all of these movies have guns in them and the people with the guns don't get taken advantage of and like the people who have guns get vengeance i think it's like natural to be like i want a gun Mm -hmm. i want to be able to defend my family also like as like 
a very weak man, like, it's just like, yeah, like, that would be something to consider in the future, just because it's just like, why would I want people to be able to just come into my house and fuck me up? Mm. But, like, also, you have to believe in the good in the world and assume that you don't live in a place where somebody's going to come into your house and fuck you up. Mm. But it's like, there are the two dimensions. Like, do you believe the world is evil and, like, somebody wants to take all of your stuff at all times, or do you believe the world is good and but like, it's both that's the thing i understand yeah. we have the perspective we do because we live yeah. in a privileged area yeah. because we are in a very safe community and we do not have those worries and concerns that other people have totally i totally understand that and that goes across the board for many different categories um but it it, it is like i i'm not gonna be some person who's just like uh in, you know, somebody else should live my lifestyle where it's like, you know, forcing other people not to get a gun. You have your reasons for things. People have their reasons for things. And the best you can do is preparation, where it's like, okay, proper training. We need to do a background check on you. We need to do, like, you, you take this background test for, its, you know, psychoanalysis. Like, you do. I, I don't know. Sometimes, like, yes, there is all these things put in place and still, like, harm is done so I feel that's when it just has to go back to um, just back to I said it once I'll say it a ton more fucking times back to education back to like advertisement the shit we see on TV and movies like stuff that's being sold to us as if it's hip like cigarettes you know back then when they would have that in movies or just advertise, whatever whatever making you think that like oh this is you know, like, uh, this is the cool shit, like, this is what you need, blah, 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 like, also, also cars, per, like, here's another example, yes, you're selling cars, look how cool, look how sleek it is, blah, 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 kids getting their license, very excited, you are driving a speeding bullet, mm. do you understand, like, again, you're handling a machine like that, you, and how many car accidents do we get a year? Too many. <laughs> too many, <laughs> too fucking many, you know, things... Things are just, it's its just like... I thought you were going to say it's destroying the environment, and that's why we should be upset that they're, like, romanticizing destroying the world. This episode brought to you by but, Elon Musk. But now, I mean, but it doesn't, it, like, you have GM coming out with it just like, what about me? What about me? Can I get EV, 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 blah, blah, blah? And they're doing the whole electric vehicle commercials. GM, GM is, like, pushing that. So, like, I've seen so many of their commercials mm. <laughs> recently. But Vol- I was, Volkswagen, too. Volkswagen's yes, been selling an electric yes. car that's, like, very popular. Which, like, yes, for the environmental thing reducing your carbon footprint like they are they are all moving because of tesla definitely a new movement is arising it is yeah. here like it's happening and that is very exciting mm-hmm. but i was just saying as far as like you're handling some serious heavy shit like know you're responsible for this no when people drink and drive you know when people drink and intoxicated with anything like it, it, exactly when you can't be intoxicated or you take these fucking painkillers and then you're drinking out and doing shit you, you shouldn't be doing and handling a forklift at work, you know? Like, when you're driving, when you're using a gun or whatever, like, stupid is a stupid does. Like, you can't, there are those... Fucking... As the great Mr. <laughs> Gump said. <laughs> There's a, yes, to quote the great Mr. That, that is a reality, so it's just like, it's just... I think sometimes we have to make bottom line, like I know I'm going in so many different directions because it just encompasses it all, but like we should definitely be maybe advertising shit in a less fun way, to be honest, to be like, hey, this is just enjoyable fun, and be like, no, listen, L- fucking listen, you're 18. Nobody's gonna buy that. Gonna, <laughs> yeah, listen, no, wait, the, the, put me on the screen, this is the commercial. You, you're about to get your fucking license, you're gonna drive a fucking car, stay the fucking speed limit, okay? You don't need this fucking shit, don't be stupid and drink and think you're so hip, oh my god, look at my girlfriend, I got my fucking parking spot, you're gonna have a fucking parking spot for the rest of your goddamn life. <laughs> when you have a fucking <laughs> goddamn cubicle in middle management, it's oh, not I, that fucking exciting. Oh, so I, get, it doesn't matter. Get a fucking get a fucking electric car if you have money. That's for sure. But you want to get a fucking Nissan. Nissans are great. <laughs> it's not my personal yeah, take. Yeah. Mazda is a little loose. I really like a uh, you know a, a tighter grip. <laughs> so, but anyway, besides the point, VW also very nice. German main cars. You know, like. People who don't, like other, you know, Japanese cars are also very good. Anyway, so this is, this commercial is getting out of hand. Listen, <laughs> listen, don't, don't fuck it up. 
This is some serious shit. You're now responsible for this. Like, fucking pay the fuck attention. And and just, like, just don't... Also, just, also so many accidents happen because kids, they zip, 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 they zip around here. They go so fast. <laughs> kids. <laughs> and adults do. They still do that. Adult. But they go so fast, you don't give enough time to, like, break and stop. And so many, like, come on, guys. We live right next to Route 17. Uh-huh. We know Route 286. How many fucking problems are on those goddamn highways? I and mean, we're just talking about a truck falling asleep. It's literally anything, anything that we invent that this is, this is like has major consequences, people. Like, the, wake the fuck up. Yeah, I didn't know you were so anti cars. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I became a full time pedestrian, <laughs> I forgot about cars. Crystal Lake. Last time I looked at my license plate, yeah. Wait, how do you spell crystal? C R Y. Wait, is this a spelling competition now? <laughs> what kind of crystal? We do by you? phonetics. Um. Okay, I'm gonna check that. Yeah, how, I I think it's very fair that people who want this is going back to the gun thing for a second, but I think people who want to buy a gun or be able to shoot a gun, they should be able to take a bullet. I think I think you should be able. To, I wonder how many people yes, would be discouraged yeah. from like getting a gun license if it meant being shot. In order to get it. Cops have to use uh, pepper spray or tasers. It tasers, yeah. They have to feel it themselves. Yeah, but, but that, that doesn't, doesn't fucking work. stop them from using it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they're still doing it. But not it. tasers. They, they think they're shooting people with tasers, but then... You th- but those are guns. No, those that's are guns. the stupidest shit I've ever heard, ever. A taser does not look anything like a gun. I, oh, that's such, I thought it was that like that was such <laughs> core improvising. Like, that was literally someone just coming out something out of their ass, and it's like, really? Really? That's the best you could come up with? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It seems like none of your reasons are good, so why don't you just... Fucking put a cone on your head and realize you're a dipshit. Why don't you put a cone on your head? Uh, also, Crystal Lake is a band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Is it not a real lake? It's a park. Um, yeah, no, it's a lake. Yeah, it's a lake. Okay. Good. No, it's, it's a real lake, yeah. Good. It better. Oh, also Rockland Lake. I love Rockland Lake. Yeah, put Rockland Lake down. That's a real lake? Yeah, Rockland Lake is definitely a real lake. Because there's like, I think it's a part of some kind of national park in Rockland County. Uh, I just had picnics there before. Uh, they have, often there's a lot of dogs, I think, that go there. So that's the other thing about lakes, too. Is that yep, it's a lake. There are often lakes. Um, I mean, there are often dogs, and also <laughs> lakes. There are dogs near lakes a lot of times. What's um, the difference between a lake and a river? Rivers move more, I guess, right? Yeah, a river is not standing well. And they're narrow. Um, yes, good job, you guys. River's moving body of water, whereas lake is an immobile body of water. Yeah. You can drink river water, but you can't drink lake water. Yeah, oh, that de- shit builds definitely not green with lake water. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. That's why we turned out the way we did. <laughs> um, can you look up the? Uh, I don't. So this is probably a man-made lake, but the Weewa in Tuxedo Park, <laughs> which is like I get. I I'm not Weewa. a Tuxedo Park resident, so I've never actually seen it with my own naked eyes. But that's like apparently okay. where that's like the, the literal water oh, hole tuxedo. of uh, Tuxedo Park. Uh, it's where the rich folk go, I guess, to partake in. It swimming is a activity. lake. I don't know if that is man made. We're gonna find out. Yeah, it's a beautiful lake though. Cause so the the one thing I I oh so I guess I do pass by it because I've done deliveries inside Tuxedo Park and uh, let me tell you they I don't know what amount of money they pay to live in there, but it's it's worth it. It's it's gorgeous inside Tuxedo Park. Mm. Uh, and also like they, they pay for the privacy put inside one of those mansions. Yes, the privacy and the seclusion that. People pay a lot to be isolated. Yeah, and like it does feel like it's it's its own like separate thing. Partially because they do have a guard who you have to be going to someone's house in order to go in there. Mm-hmm. But the other thing too is like it's very mountainous and there's a lot of trees uh-huh. and it almost feels like you're in a Stephen King novel when you drive through there. So, oh. so and there are some like I think not it's not speculation, but I think it's possible someone could go in Tuxedo Park and disappear. And maybe they just end up rich. Who knows what happens when you go to Tuxedo Park. But mm-hmm. We should come up with a new trade to pawn off onto rich people so that they pay us a lot of money for it. Ooh, like a job? Like a new, a new service? Yeah, like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, we'll think of it one day. Yeah, like dog walker. No, that's not new. That is a, yeah, that's a good job, though. Yeah. But you just can't make that much money because they're just like, oh, I can pay somebody $10 to do this. And it's just like, yeah, you can pay somebody $10 to do this, but also, like, you could also help somebody live. Yeah. 
Yeah, Jordan was a dog walker for a, a period of his life, too. I was a dog walker for a period of my life, yes. Um, I walked dogs uh, in Weehawken, overlooking uh, New York City. Not Weewa Lake, Weehawken. <laughs> uh, no, Weewa Lake can't see. But, yeah, walking dogs is a great profession, uh, definitely before coronavirus. Because, um, mm-hmm. like, legit, I was walking people's dogs all the time. Like, some of them, they would get walked twice a day. And you'd be like, why even have a dog if you literally never see your dog? Like, this is the same as your dog being in a shelter all day. Hmm. But I guess, like, people just enjoy the fact that they get to come home to their dog, and they're selfish, and they're like, oh, it's worth it for me to keep this dog inside their house, you know? When people can have things, they do. Like just because they can do it and they want to do it, so they, like like they they just do it. That is one if of the saddest things If you have the money to do though. it, people eventually do it. Whatever it is, if mm. you have the money, if you can, like yeah, I don't know. People people do people really don't live minimalistic lives. Not a lot of people do. Well, yeah. you only got one, so you gotta live it to the max and then get that's, off the damn place. That's true, right? but you can <laughs> you can do that without accumulating so many. Things I don't know with purchases or experiences or consumer like I don't know stuff you can you can live life to the max but in a minimalistic way. Yeah, yeah, and I think the I think it's just a matter of getting used to a certain lifestyle because it's like once you've been minimalist for a while, it's probably a lot easier. Yeah. And the hardest thing is going from not being minimalist to being minimalist because then it feels like you're getting things stripped away from you, which is how a lot of people feel when they feel like they are paying a lot of taxes for things and then they're, they're paying for other people's stuff or if they feel like things are being taken from them that they, that they are entitled to or have the right to. Because yeah. uh, that's the other thing. People, people like having things, but as much as people like having things, they equally hate having those things taken away from them in any yes. way, you know? Yeah, they do like having the, that, yeah. the, the, the control. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah, that's why the economy is bad in America in a lot of ways because like there are people who are getting paid way too much to do what they do, mm-hmm. and then once it gets to the point where they can't get paid anymore, then all of a sudden they're like, "What the fuck?" And then they have to do shady shit to make that money to pay mm-hmm. off their seven houses and their boats and well, their extra you just cars. A question mm-hmm. in my or head: Or if the stock market crashes, what are your yeah. guys' thoughts on Elon Musk? being on SNL on May 8th. I'm excited to see it. I'm, I'm very curious to see how he does, honestly. Because um, I, I didn't realize this, but I guess he had a guest spot on the Big Bang Theory because I was talking to my boss. And I was, I was like, oh, he's going to be on SNL. And my boss did not know what, what SNL was. And then, and then he <laughs> thought, and he's like, oh, yeah, I saw him. He played a dishwasher, right? And I'm like, well, it didn't happen yet, so I don't think so. And then I saw that he played a dishwasher in the Big Bang Theory. But uh, um, yeah, I, uh, I, he seems like he has a pretty good sense of humor. So I think depending on what the sketch is. I think it's because he is unpredictable. He is a little wacky. And also, I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever seen Elon Musk actually speak. <laughs> Oh, really? I don't think I've seen a video of him actually talking, and I, I have no idea. I've just seen a bunch of fig, uh, pictures of him. I know, you know, the, the, the you know, the, the, the stuff that, that looms around his aura and the mystery and, like, everyone, like, the talk about him and, like, uh-huh. people's thoughts on him and, obviously, what he's doing in tech news and what he's doing in, you know, environmental shit or what he's not doing, you know, as a fucking billionaire that he should be doing, which is, like, not being a billionaire and giving all your money to people need it. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, just go... I don't know, if you're that at that stage, like, just, just go... Just... It's it's just just so much money. It's just so much money. I just can't, I can't fathom, I can't, like, that's just too much. It's just too much. That'd be so easy to give so much away. Half of it. More than 75% of it, and then you'll still have so much left. Yeah, you know, 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 the the thing is, when you get that much money, I think your brain really does fuck start to function differently and obviously oh, there are people who are course, wealthy who give course, a lot of money you know like I think like look what like Jeff Bezos' wife Melinda no oh, sorry um, Bill no, Gates Ma- you mean? Melinda's ability. their foundation no but, 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 no, but Jeff, Jeff Bezos' ex-wife she like recently just gave like a lot she of did, money right? Yes. she's been very generous uh-huh. and some people do it but I think a lot of them don't and the thing is like if I was like alright just give half your money to someone right now like would you like willingly give up half your money to someone right now uh, it depends on the circumstance. It really does depend on the situation. Is this person dire me? Is this somebody I know? Is this somebody like <laughs> my situation? Then like, uh, yeah, I'm not <laughs> not a wealthy person. Right, like I'm not of that super super high standard level. Like I I 
I am good where I am at right now as an individual. This would be very different if I had a family, if mm. I was married, if I had kids, <clears throat> like, you know what I'm saying? If things were in the mix, we're just coming out of a pandemic. Like this is, I, you know, I am, I'm an investor. I invested in stocks. I did that like, you know, cause I am trying to build my future mm. and for it to grow, um, on and on. And, yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, uh, honestly, I, as I get older, I just get to the point where I am like just donating more. I don't know, do more charities, did find stuff like more like things online. You check your sources, and you're just like well, you're just being, donating to charities so that you can write them off on your taxes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, not what I was thinking. It's like right now, everybody thinks that. Um, no, I mean, but to, if you, if I'm you, being if you make, honest. If you make, $30 million a year and you donate $5 million to charity, then that's $5 million that like you still get goodwill for and you still like gave money to your friends who work at that charity. And then you also like don't have to pay as high of taxes, but continue. Okay, great. I, I'm not even going to be ever in the million. No, I'm just um, saying how it's hypocritical. Just I, I, yeah. I was, not what you, I was saying was that to be honest, the real like, one of the the big wake up calls was the Black Lives Matter movement. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna like be honest. I mean, I I haven't been you know I I've been living like I lived with my family in the same household for like throughout college. I commuted in college. You know, like when I finally moved out the past you know two, like two years. I that was the the jump of independence. Okay, man, like whatever, whatever, and like always working throughout school. Graduated was working, blah blah. Always always been working. And like saving up, like it being in that working class, I mean, like, yeah, you, you, like, you save up and you actually have to do the hard work. Um, but that was just like, I don't know, it was just like a big thing with just seeing more and more. Here's another thing. When I was younger, did not really pay attention that much to current events, did mm. not pay that much to, to, to news. As I got older, it was way, way more important to me and way more critical and it's always important and like younger kids should definitely be aware of it but it was i was just more invested as i got older and now like when we're doing the morning shower which is a news podcast even if you're doing stuff comedically like yeah you pay attention to the news you read shit we read shit at different sources every morning and it's great to get things from different sources do not get things from one source only because yeah. people it's probably biased okay you gotta go like also, tune into, like, an international news, foreign news stuff that's, cool, you know. Yeah, Rena's right, guys. And if, uh, but if you are going to tune into one news source, <laughs> uh, tune into the morning shower, which is our news source. Uh, cause we we'll all give pool. you the variety. Yeah, we'll give you the variety. So you have to do all the heavy lifting of buying a bunch of newspapers. Because newspapers get expensive and they get, get heavy. It's yeah, a lot of paper. You'll get Associated Press. You'll get NBC. You'll get Fox. You'll get CNN. Yo, we will give you the New York Post. We will, we'll, we'll, we'll stoop that low to give you the Boston weird Post. stories the New York Post has to offer. Guardian. Yeah. Um, Boston Globe. Ugh, so many. I should have gotten that challenge. <laughs> is Lake Tacoma, is that a, a lake? Can you check that? I think it's I a, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's a lake, but sure. yeah. I think it's Washington, maybe. Oh, let's see. Let's, let's, let's. Let's, 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 Sometimes people who are wealthy, their minds get to a point where they're like, yeah, that's half my money, though. Like, I need half yes. my money to live. But I, I would, like, I would do it. I would give somebody half my money. If it was, it was that dire. And so, like, I, like, it was, it, uh, to be at that point, like, it would definitely, I look at my inner circle first. I do look at, like, if there are family members who are struggling, if there is a friend or somebody, like, that is who I look at first. Mm. But if I got to the level where it was that huge, like, I accumulated that much wealth and generation, I knew my family, whatever it would be, like, set up, like, holy shit, get back to your fucking community like yes yeah. i would absolutely do that and what i was saying with the movement it was just that that was just a whole thing where it's just like okay yeah i want to make sure wherever i'm donating the charity it actually gets to those places it's actually going to the right place it's actually the right people it's actually it's actually going to a good cause it's actually going to you know it, 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 like assist with this change it's going to like do something mm -hmm. um 
But it's also it's also doing stuff like uh, as a unit and a community and together, and it's not just like oh let's boycott Amazon for two weeks and then let's go back on like that that yeah. that does jack shit. And we all know there's just another. We're waiting for the next couple of decades, whatever, to see who the next villain is that's going to arise. Because there's always we always <laughs> is get Elon, a, we is always Elon get a villain? new villain. We always get a new villain. You know, Elon is a great villain. villain. He's already he he is it already. We have multiple villains. We've had multiple villains in one. In one. I see, I in one term, like one period of do you time. Think, do you think most people see Elon as a villain? As I, I, I don't think the majority of people do because yeah. I think the majority of people in America listen to Joe Rogan. Sincerely. People, even villains rub elbows with him, though. Like, he's got to rub, like, he's... Is Joe Rogan a villain? <laughs> In the scenario, uh, if I was a very evil person, I would definitely go on Joe Rogan. For <laughs> like that—that's how I would phrase it. Like there are people who I like who go on Joe Rogan, and I listen to those Joe Rogan episodes. But like, if I was somebody who was very evil, I would go on Joe Rogan to get a bunch of people behind me so that people could not get rid of me in society. Because hmm. that seems wow. to be Joe Ro- Rogan and like Bill Maher's fit in society right now. Is they basically have on people who have been tossed aside by other parts of society. I don't like and then they bring them back on to be rehabilitated and say, Hey, you deserve a chance to talk, even though we gave you a chance to talk and you said something fucked up. But mm-hmm. like, here, say something fucked up again so that people can see that this is just who you are. You know, like, I feel like that's what it is. It's like, oh, people are just fucked up, and you have to let people be fucked up. Like, that's kind of the mentality that I think a lot of white men in the country have at this point. White men. Kind of. No, but, like, it is kind of that where it's coming from. Because, like, a lot of people are talking about political correctness and wokeness and all of this shit still as being a yeah. negative thing. And it's just like, you can't call this a negative thing. Like, if you call it a negative thing, like, you're just an asshole. Like, why are you not down to change? Like, is your life really ruined right now? I just read a quote that James Carville was saying that, like, wokeness is an issue in the Biden administration. Are you fucking kidding? We still have kids in the fucking cages. Who, who's fucking woke about the Biden administration? Mm-hmm. Are you, like, are you joking? Like, he didn't raise the minimum wage. Are you fucking kidding? What, what do you mean woke? Like, it's fucking bullshit <laughs> that people can think that. Yeah. And, like, shit doesn't get done because... There are people who are just purposely throwing out, like, bombs to be like, oh, wow, aren't we moving too fast, guys? Like, aren't we all gay now? Aren't we all trans now? Like, aren't you scared of all being, like, united as one together? And it's like, no, like, people want this. Like, why are you saying on TV that this is a bad thing when people want this? And it's like, well, I I don't want this. I want to be against everything. Like, my job is to just be against everything, which, like, Joe Rogan effectively is just against everything. Like, he's Mm -hmm. a comedian. Like, he's legit just there to make jokes about things. Mm -hmm. But then people take that for being fact because they're too stupid to understand that Joe Rogan is not, like, an expert on things. Joe Rogan just, like, is curious the same way humans are curious. But is he just putting on that persona so he can push his own agenda? No, I think he's stupid as fuck and loves money. Like, (laughs) I think think he is smart because, like, he obviously is making a good business decision to... Have been authentic to himself, well, which is being stupid. Well, he made a with Spotify, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and well, like he, he wants to have that deal. Also, he's always been lowest common denominator type comic. Like, he's never been, like, this higher entertainment type comic. He's always been like, I am going to see how many people I can get to laugh. Like, I want to be a stadium comic. Like, that is how Joe Rogan is, like, wor- worked his way up to, right? Mm-hmm. Like, he did have, like, it is fun to hear him talk about stand-up, and that's one of my favorite things about his show is like people talking about like they're coming up through stand up and I think it's really interesting to hear about like the different scenes across the when country. When was the last time he did stand up? He does it all the time. Yeah. He still does shows? Yeah, like he, like he started oh, doing shows again. Oh, like, oh, uh, oh, like, like he was doing Chappelle's uh, shows out oh, in Ohio. He even, right, when they had that period doing the. That was earlier in the pandemic, right? Yeah, that was, that was, that was, that was months right? ago, yeah. And then, and then some, I think Chappelle got COVID or something like that. But they're probably still doing them, though. No, but I think... And then, because Rogan did take time off, because the, that was a part of the Comedy Store doc, I think, too. And, like, his story and, like, his association oh, with that was that right, right, it was the whole thing with him being there and then, like, the beef with Carlos Mencia. Yeah, and then that's him, like, getting released fun. from the Comedy Store and then, like, not coming back, I think, until... It might have been when Mitzi passed away, or it might have been like a little bit before Mitzi passed away. Um, Around? Yeah, yeah, I think right. so. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was a part of him coming back into it, and, like, uh, but, yeah, but he, like, I think, like, like stand-up is, like, his thing that, he's, that he, he likes to do the yeah. most, mm-hmm. so, yeah. um, and that's, and, that, and that's why you see a lot of comics who are on podcasts, because it's, like, 
it's like one of the closer mediums to getting to do like just like stand up is because like, you're getting yeah. to like put your opinions out there. You're getting so to, what would Elon Musk's podcast be called? Like if he had one that he was doing, like yeah. if he was the host if of it, he was, mm-hmm. uh, called "I'm Right and You're Wrong" <laughs> by Elon Musk, or, or or don't worry about that that test rocket that crashed, and it's always justifying why a, a crashing rocket is not a big deal. Jordan, do you have any? I was thinking of trying to uh, like something to do with like, um. Um, like many answers with my. <laughs> <laughs> uh, alliteration. Yes. I was trying to. I mean, that's not straight alliteration. Cause I must ask you a question. Got, oh darn! That was mm. that's a good one. Yeah, mm. I was trying to be punny. That yeah. was good. Yeah. A long way. Elongated musk. <laughs> <laughs> elongated musk. Elon, Elon, Elon is short for elongated. <laughs> Elon. That's a good one. Yeah, that that mm, I really like that one. He's inside a long. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Cause I, I I think he's like so the thing with like being all right. So I guess this this kind of goes into the whole thing with Joe Rogan too. Cause Joe Rogan is a host, and like I don't know how you guys feel about this, but like, do you think that it's like the host's job to like? provide a platform for the guests or like because like joe rogan does that but he also uh-huh. does it in a way where he gets to also demonstrate his own opinions where like there are some hosts who sure, are sure because like, this is a conversational format it's not yeah. so much and it is part interview but it's it's not it's not like npr you know what i'm saying where right, right very technical let's ask you about um or they they have on um, like big picture like it's like the movies and they're interviewing about this and like they're conversa- you know what i'm saying his yeah he obviously uh, Joe Rogan uh, adds his perspective quite often. His yeah. point of view. So, um, what was your question again? I think everything is just what it is. <laughs> I, th- oh I think God. like that was massive. It doesn't matter what Joe Rogan intended for his show to be, but I think like it's his what show. It is now. But his show has become like press, like it is press. Yeah. You know, like it, like the same way Mark Maron's show started out as him like solving issues between comedians and like his beefs with comedians like that's how it started out mm, interesting and then now he's like literally interviewing every single celebrity because he has such a big following that they're just like oh if we want to win the oscars we have to go on here well you know who went on podcast oscars no but do you know who went on mark maron anthony hopkins you know who like went on mark maron daniel kaluuya you know who went on mark maron yeah he became part of the press tour sure uh yeah. francis mcdormand even, listen because you know their podcast <laughs> their podcast evolved and i think also the press tours have changed the junkets where it's just like you're not going on late night talk shows so like so like right now to have these conversations people want more in-depth conversation like you sit and listen for an hour or two hours whatever to finally get inside cool details about these people to really hear because talk shows are scripted so that platform changed to podcasts late night tv is it's such a weird place for now and like obviously they're still in the pandemic so they've had a They've, that's been one of the, the entertainment fields I think it's I don't the watch hardest it I don't time. think I watch any late night shows yeah like, like they're basically just doing because I, wa- I watched a clip that Conan had because Conan was interviewing Steve Yoon uh, maybe like a month or so ago mm-hmm. and like, like that's basically the show and the whole thing is that they're doing it inside like uh a studio where it's all cardboard cutout people, and then Andy Richter oh, is the only yeah. live person in the audience. It's weird. Yeah, I feel like Conan kind of gets away with it one because Conan does the podcast, so he kind of he I think he's adapting better. And like Conan's always been good about pointing out the weird situation yes. and, and like be uh-huh. able to play with it. Whereas like uh-huh. so watching like Jimmy Fallon or watching Colbert and like I haven't even gone anywhere near James Corden during the pandemic. I, I can only imagine what he's doing because he can't get in cars with people and sing karaoke songs. But like, <laughs> um, but like, they're like, I don't like. Are they gonna be out? Outda- like, are they done? Because like, I I guess some people do still watch them. Even I don't think the they'll pandemic. ever be done because there's still a bunch of yeah. That's been part of people's routine. You come home from work. You're, but what you if it sucks? Watch it and do. It's it has sucked. It sucked in the past, and people still watch it and like it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I just think it's. I don't think it'll die, but just going back to the thing of uh, you were asking for Joe Rogan's, um, I I think it is yes also like he is providing a platform for those people, um, but it, like he loves challenging people. That's the thing, and that's why yeah. yes, so many people we talk about this, so many people listen to it and attract so much attention because you don't want to see. It's more amusing when you see people argue. People get very passionate about whatever they're talking about and have two conflicting points and stuff as opposed to people always on the same page. People always agreeing. People always liking each other. And people like having blah, blah, blah. It's true, but there are those people who like 
I don't know. They like a little bit of drama. They uh-huh. like a little bit, like, things get... Like, those fucking political conversations that you watch on TV when people bicker, 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 like, back and forth, and they're all talking at the same time, and you're just like, oh, my God, I don't even know what any of you are saying. Yeah. You know, that, like, clip in Birdcage, where it's like, this is smartest uh, TV show on television. Yeah. <laughs> on no, show on television. It, it's, it's, baff- in there. it's baffling when you when you watch clips of, from the news, and or you're just watching the news live as it's happening, and they have, like, these pundits who are literally talking over each other, and it's just... You know how like you, you know how words work. You know that we can't hear what you're saying right now. I mean, now. we do that with each other, but we're high. That's true. Yeah, we yeah. have. If they were high, or high, <laughs> or high, or if anything. they were high, that would be so much more fun to watch. The high um, news, yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, you don't need to be high to deliver or get your news. And being high isn't the answer. Uh, it's being right. Elon Musk. So <laughs> <laughs> being Elon Musk is the answer, whether you're high or not. So yeah, I am. I am excited though. I am excited to see uh, what it's like when he's on SNL because um, I want. I to be honest, I want them to make jabs at him. I want SNL to. Like, but that's the thing. They don't. They're not going to cross a line. I think no, but I think, I think with him. They? I think with him they could because he has kind of like. Because that's a part of like a, of like taking power is embracing like being able to laugh at yourself. Because obviously like there yeah. was some like like uh, Donald Trump who that was like, like he could not take jokes to himself. And I think that is inevitably a part of the thing that like hurt him. Like obviously he amassed a lot of support and became very powerful because he was a president, but also because people like, he had a lot of influence. Yeah. But I think I think the one thing that he couldn't do is he couldn't find a way to laugh at himself. And I think that that is a part of his downfall. Whereas like Elon Musk, I think is, is self aware enough and. I think because it's like if you get ahead of the joke and it's like and like they've done that with like Hillary Clinton going on there they've done that with other like political people yeah who these go are on there. but the, the, these are also like the moves it's just a smart business decision because their ratings are gonna go way up yeah and they're not gonna do certain like they're not gonna be like uh, they're not gonna point out the fact that like that like where Elon's wealth came from they're probably not gonna do jokes about that cause that, or they're not gonna do things about how all these like automatic cars have been crashing also because they have to rehearse with them yeah <laughs> so then and, they do this he's gonna be like he's like no I'm not doing and that. the get the, from what I've, things I've like read and heard like the guest does have a lot of pull especially when they are very influential mm-hmm. guests because they basically mm-hmm. the way it's, it's it's a very interesting setup that the way it happens is like the writers will write and they'll go and pitch to the guest yeah. and like the guest is basically getting final approval it's like yeah. more Michaels obviously is the final say but like if a guest does not want to do a sketch then they're just not going to do it and I guess that's maybe that's just being a good host to him but also it's like then you're letting the person who's not the trained comedian craft the show essentially you know? I, I don't know I feel like Lauren's just gonna his dick's gonna get hard like I think he's it's just been hard married. for a long time yeah. it's pretty crazy though that uh, the <laughs> The show that was once owned by General Electric is now having Elon Musk on. Yeah. What? GE used to own NBC. What? Yeah, that's Did why. I know this. Yeah, yeah, that's why National Broadcasting Company existed was to uh, put out uh, signals to these electronic TVs that we're going to use. Break, power. break the break that down for us, Jordan. The, ne- the network family tree. Viacom <laughs> <laughs> well, no, owns blah blah. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of people. I mean, many people know this, but there are some people that don't know these. You know, uh, like AT and T owning HBO. I didn't know that until John Oliver said. Well, a lot of episodes. this has changed recently because, like, when we were kids, it was even different. You know, yes, it used to yeah. only like the big one when we were in like middle school and high school was like, "Wow, Disney owns ESPN." Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, "Wow," just like as a kid, all I was watching was ABC networks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and that's all I was ABC watching because it's like you watch Before ESPN free. all day if you're a kid, and then. Uh, you watch Disney. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Like, those are the two things. You either watch sports or you're, like, watching Disney Channel. Or, okay, Nickelodeon or Net- Cartoon Network. Well, yeah, no, but those are the those are the competition to the OGs. Like, uh, Cartoon Network is Turner Broadcasting, which is also CNN, mm-hmm. which also has a little bit of a black tilt in the world because they're centered in Atlanta, so they have mm-hmm. a little bit more diversity at their mm-hmm. center focus. Nickelodeon's under who? CBS. Paramount. Oh, no, they're no, par- they're, they were they're always Paramount. Viacom. Yeah, so, yeah. so there was the Nickelodeon to MTV pipeline, right, which right. was a big power player uh, in the youth. Uh, you know. Because there's, there's like Nickelodeon films and there are MTV films, and a lot of times they, they kind of crossed over with each other. So like crazy kids who are sliming people become horny kids who are... <laughs> who slime each other. <laughs> <on> <laughs> <internet>. <laughs> 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 
spring, break, <laughs> spring break and shit like that. But, like, it is really, like, it is pretty crazy, like, how close some of these things are, you know? Yeah. It's like the cartoon channel becomes the news channel CNN when you're older because, like, you go from thinking, like, everything is a war and everything is crazier than it actually is to now you're watching CNN and, like, you want to see murder. You're, like, you want to see shit happening. Mm. You want to see things being worse than they are, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know? Uh, it's and it's so a natural weird. transition. As young kids, we were turned on by violence. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah. the most... Like someone being murdered. It was exciting. Mm -hmm. Also, just one last thing. That's why people Fox watch News. Criminal Minds. Sorry, Law & Order. That's crazy. I'm sorry. That's just... We're just getting horny off of the idea of <laughs> Criminal Minds right now. But... <laughs> Fox <laughs> News. Yes, Fox News. Yeah, no, horny. but... Fo yes, no. Fox News, for example, uh, is was owned by Fox... And Fox also owned the TV channel, Fox, mm -hmm. and they would have their cartoons on Sunday night, mm -hmm. and that would happen after football, which, like, what types of commercials do you see during football? Dreams. Beer! Beer, babes. Booze! Boobs. <laughs> boobs. Yeah. Booze and um, boobs. <laughs> but, like, you're basically taking... That's a great podcast name. Booze and boobs. <laughs> you're taking all of these people who think that, like, cartoons are politically correct and, like, cartoons are reality. You're taking all of the people who just watch sports, and then you're saying, here's your news for this. You know? Mm. Like, you guys are probably a little bit sexist. You guys are probably a little bit racist. You guys probably live in the middle of nowhere. Discovery, Discovery is new. Or... Discovery was a company that was just based off of Discovery Channel, but then they have slowly engulfed other channels, yeah. I think, by their ability to uh, create science content, which, like, is very important. And I This think is a great challenge for Jordan. Like, okay, HGTV, where did they come? <laughs> well, yeah, HGTV was, like, a, these were all, like, separate networks, but then they got owned by Scripps, which was, like, the higher-up company, but then Scripps got bought by Discovery, so now there is no Scripps wow. Networks, so there's only Discovery. Yeah. Wait, so HGTV's with who? It is under the Discovery. <laughs> Discovery, yeah. Oh, yeah. under Discovery. And Discovery is, like, the smallest yes. one out of those. Like, they cannot beat anybody, and that's why you'll find Discovery shows on Hulu, which is owned by Disney and Comcast, which Comcast is now owning NBC. What about Verizon? And also... Comcast uh, gives out internet service and cable service, so uh -huh. then they own a lot of the cable companies and the entertainment service. AT and T owns HBO and Turner. So yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. Verizon, the, service, the next cellular service, does that own anything? They own Yahoo. Oh right, mm. you told me that. Before. So like Yahoo is still Yahoo. doing news technically. That was so insane when you told me that. I was like, when did that happen? Yeah. I feel like all of this is behind like a curtain. I'm just like. You know, before Didn't you know Sprint it. Didn't Sprint merge with Verizon? Yes, they did. Uh, yes. Wait, no. They merged with T-Mobile. Sprint, am I thought, merged with T-Mobile. Okay, so, so first Sprint bought Nextel. You gotta check back in uh, Back before, when Nextel was the king, and then they got bought by Sprint. Uh, that was first, and then, yeah, I think... No, I think Verizon and Sprint are, are separate now. Isn't that crazy? That guy went from Sprint to Verizon, and now to... No, it wasn't it the other way? Oh, wait, no. Oh, Sprint no, and Verizon. No, he went to Verizon, he, then Sprint. You're right. Uh huh. And then he jumped ship again. He did. Yeah. He. Oh, he. He has the, that. Can you hear me now? He's got. He's got who knew? One line. He There's knew. only T-Mobile, AT and T, and Verizon now. And visible and Xfinity. What That's about that one with the commercials and it's that little squishy hairy ball? A phone commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Squishy hairy ball. <laughs> Is that like a cleaning product? It sounds like it's like Kleenex or something. <laughs> no, no, Jordan, look it up. It's, it's Google squishy no, no. hairy ball. We're, we're getting off the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at this. Yeah. This is getting too far away. From Everyone, me. if you're listening, Google squishy no, hairy ball. It's send a, it to Rita. It's a, <laughs> it's a service. Please do not send your squishy balls to my girlfriend. <laughs> not yours, just other people that you find on the internet. Send those to Rita. <laughs> yeah, send them to me. Let's but if they're not Jordan, squishy and they're not hairy, I swear to God, we're going to be Let's pissed. make Jordan yeah, squirm. I don't want some bleach balls. <laughs> bleach balls? <laughs> bleach balls. <laughs> but they're bleach balls. <laughs> bleach balls? <laughs> um, Instead of beach boys, can you imagine if they were beach balls? <laughs> <laughs> actual beach balls or if they were or if their band was called beach balls if it was called beach would they be raunchy yeah it's actual Brendan no if they were called beach balls Brenda, you're gonna be listen I don't know what listen, your, your reality was I'm thinking was. of such a great visual graphic in my head right now for beach balls <laughs> <laughs> for a, a picture of what their album would look like is it good Oh, it's real good. What did you tell us? Um, no, I'm gonna just draw it. <laughs> Maybe put 
we're on the Patreon. Yeah, if we're on the Patreon, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to work on this. Yeah. Um, okay, um, we'll put a pin in the beach, the, they, No, then you're going to deflate the, the if you put a pin in the beach balls. <laughs> it, also, the, the, the hairy <laughs> balls. Save it for later, because it's definitely a phone, it's called, like, it's called, like... Vonage. <laughs> Is that is that the That's the, not it, but that's a thing. Squishy yeah. hairy ball <laughs> <No>. <laughs> commercial. <laughs> they're like little green and orange balls. <laughs> like, I can't believe you guys don't remember. They're animated? Wait, is the phone Yeah, they're company? animated. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Is it like, I don't know, Boost Mobile? <laughs> <laughs> is it Bruce Mobile? Bruce Mobile? <laughs> Bruce? <laughs> no, Bo- Boost. <laughs> Bruce Mobile. <laughs> Bruce Mobile. <laughs> I have um, the control. Yeah. Anyway, the point of all this is <laughs> everything is owned by something else. There's always a bigger fish who owns a smaller fish, no matter how big of a fish you think you are and how yeah. big your lake is. Speaking of lakes, <laughs> how am I doing over there? This, wait, this is actually, wait, this is a good time to talk about. So, Warwick <laughs> Valley is one of the big umbrella I knew like, the companies. Trap. And then underneath that big umbrella company is the Pine Island Corporation, the Chester Corporation, oh, and the Greenwood Lake how Corporation, uh-huh. and the Sugarloaf Corporation, and the Edenville Corporation, and yeah, T-Mobile uh, and Sprint did merge. And Florida, and also Florida, New York is underneath the Warwick yeah. umbrella. Listen, guys, um, we're gonna have to ask Nick Bailey if he ever comes on the podcast if if he oh, uh, feels calling. <laughs> wait, is he Floridan? Floridian? Yeah, he's from Florida. Yeah, right? yeah, we need some Florida opinions. Yeah, listen, guys, he's also from Warwick, but he's from the borough of Florida. We listen we, here on Sessions of Mary Jane. We offer a lot of perspectives, and some of them are, are right, and then some of them are the one that Jordan just said just now. <laughs> so just like remember, like, do you want to side with the oppressor, or do you want to side with the smaller fish in this scenario? And that smaller fish is Greenwood Lake. So. You make your decision. We all know the right answer. GWL is independent. Oh my gosh, now you have abbreviations for this oh. town. Oh, GWL was always the abbreviation. Look at those weird little stickers that people get to show where they're from. The, the one weird little stickers. You're at. Whenever you're at. Oh, Metro by T Mobile. That's a. That's oh, Metro. Yeah, yeah, Metro. Maybe that's what I was MPS. There's something called Mint Metro Mobile. PCS, yeah. Metro PCS. Metro PCS. Cricket Mobile. That's what I said. Cricket. Is that the cricket? Is the it's, squishy balls? <laughs> <laughs> Cricket is the one, right? Right, Jordan? Yeah. I was right. like, yes. Oh, God. That yeah. feels so much better. Yeah, so... so <laughs> you're on- <laughs> squishy airy balls made me feel better. So you're... You're on- <laughs> Yeah, what was it again? Uh, Cricket. Yeah, Cricket. Cricket. Why did I call it? So, <clears throat> you have 12. Really? You have 12 lakes. Yeah. That's right. <clears throat> no one gonna be... My yeah, I wanted to be Rika today. Who's gonna be who, forty-six? Yeah. Who's the Who's the last person in the world you'd want to beat your record if they beat your record? Bina. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Hitler? <laughs> Yeah, we're definitely gonna have Bean on the podcast. She has to be like the 100th episode spectacular. Maybe. Yeah, gotta give her something. Special. And she's gonna get a hundred of whatever she has to list, and she's gonna beat yo that twin v twin. That's, that's yeah, we gotta epic. do a challenge. Yeah, hey, that's that's a drop for you guys that we are going to mix cup. up later on. We're gonna mix up our uh, it's podcast be in the later episodes. Season, no, no, much much later, but it's something you can look forward to that we are going to throw different challenges into the mix and have opponents battle opponents and and. Um, yeah, uh, we also have, uh, again, projects in store. Keep loving that Patreon. We'll Ooh. keep giving you some goodies. We got keep live shows loving. coming, too. Yes. In person. In person. We're all vaxxed, motherfuckers. Uh, details for that are going to come out soon. Uh, anything else? Brendan, do you have any other lakes in you? Uh, my leg might be getting dried out. I was really, I was mostly focused on getting one at least. I did have a fear. Guys listening, girls listening, whatever gender you are listening, like there was a lot of deliberation about what the category was going to be today, and yeah. I, I was a little scared. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, but uh, I've got all the Great Lakes, I think, or I got most of the Great Lakes, so I feel good about that. Uh, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, last thoughts before we bid our fabulous listeners adieu. Uh, yeah, just keep being good, keep being well, uh, and if you don't, then you're gonna go to hell, so (laughs) that's me signing off. Uh, yeah, thanks guys for coming into the sessions with Mary Jane, uh, more peace and love. Bye guys. Enjoy your munchies.